to see you To behold you as my king I want to be where you are I gotta be where you are I want to be where I I know the safest place to be is where you are, God. I know the healing place is where you are, God. That's where I want to be. There is peace. There is safety. There is mercy. There is love. It emanates from you, God. Lord, I thank you for being all that is wonderful. Lord, as we bask in your presence, we ask God that you will meet your people where they are. I ask God that your Holy Spirit will fill this place. Allow us to see you like never before. Allow us to feel you like never before. Allow us to hear you like never before. Dear God, I ask that you would empty me of myself, that you would fill me with your spirit, and that you would touch your people. And it's these things we ask in your matchless, in your wonderful, in your amazing, and your powerful name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. You know, I'm excited when I uh, am a part of a church that the rain doesn't stop the saints from coming to the house of the Lord. Uh-huh. God made the rain too. He made the rain too. Amen. Amen. I also want to say thank you to those that are also joining from online. Um, how the old church, I thought it not robbery to join us. I don't know the rest of it. <laughs> Amen. I'm like, I'm half and half. So I'm going to walk the middle as God has given me grace to do. Um, so I want to first of all dismiss, well, we pray. Welcome. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Are there any visitors in the house tonight? Any guests? First time visitors that are joining us for Bible study? Okay. Home crowd tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, I do want to um, just take a moment to dismiss the kids, dismiss the children into Children's Church where they will receive the Word of God on their level. Um, you know, even today, I remember a lot of the stuff that I learned in Sunday school, in children's church. So we pray that it sticks with them all the days of their life. Amen. Anybody else was Awana's baby, vacation Bible school, baby, every time. It's just like, man, we at the church again. <laughs> but um, my mom was like, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. Well, I think she did something, right? Amen. <laughs> Got a brother preaching. Um, I do want to give honor to uh, Pastor Jomo. Um, uh, his birthday uh, was this week, so he's taking a couple. He's taking some time to enjoy his birthday. Uh, amen. So, uh, <clears throat> and... Uh, so let's, uh, let's jump in tonight. Tonight we got, a, we got a good, I think I say that every time. But I believe the whole Bible is good, like from front to back. 
Um, but we'll start with the vision. Uh, the vision of this church is to equip people with the knowledge of God's word, to empower people to seek God's face in daily prayer, to encounter and be filled with the Holy Spirit, to evangelize our community, our country, and our world, to embrace every person in godly love, for God is love, for each one to reach one. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, whether it's electronic Bible or a paper Bible, uh, let's read our faith confession. This is my Bible. I can be what it says I can be. I can do what it says I can do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I believe that my life will never be the same after hearing and doing the living Word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are going to continue. Are you enjoying 2 Samuel? Yeah, I, I'm enjoying 2 Samuel. You know, outside of Jesus, perhaps, David has more chapters in the Bible than any other character. So we get to see this whole story play out. Uh, I said, man, David got more verses than Adam. What is going on? But uh, so we get to see the ups and downs of uh, the life of David. Um, and today, I've entitled this Bible study, chapter, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 17, I've entitled, God Gives Us Hope. God Gives Us Hope. And today, we'll look at God beginning to turn some things around in the life of David. So, what we've seen so far, and um, you can kind of have the map up just as a background, but uh, what we've seen so far is David has fled out of Jerusalem because his son Absalom has sought to take the throne from him. Last couple of weeks, we've seen David fleeing the city, and as he was passing the last outskirts of the city, we see David weeping. Um, then as David gets a little further, he runs into Shimei. Shimei is of the family of Saul. And he's yelling and he's fussing and he's cussing and he's throwing stones at David. Um, and they was like, David, do you want me to? And David said, no. Perhaps God will have mercy on me. Right? I said, okay. But we see that people have turned their back on him. Um, we see that Ahithophel, one of his trusted advisors, is now on the side of Absalom. And um, then last week, we saw how, well, in the map, we um, just, Jerusalem, I'm going to mention some of the places that we're going to hear about tonight, and hopefully you'll remember the map. But we're going to talk about Baruam. That was a place that we're going to mention today. We're going to talk about Mahananam. That's a place we're going to mention today. And crossing the Jordan River. Right, So give you a little context, a little picture of what we'll be talking about, because I think it's hard to do, uh, it's hard to do land nav in your head. <laughs> I think a map is very good for land navigation. Um, so we, now we see that uh, Absalom has, or Ahithophel has now been advising Absalom. And at the very end of chapter 16, um, Ahithophel advised Absalom to lay publicly with David's wives that he left at the temple or that he left at the house. And what is he doing? He's indicating that I, Absalom, is completely in charge. I have ascended to the throne. David's harem and his wives are now my wives. And the Bible says that um, he displayed that openly. And then it says, um, so we see that David is facing an embarrassing, a hopeless, a tragic situation. His family has turned on him. And now Jerusalem, the famed city of Jerusalem, David is on the run. And when I look at it, I see that it looks like one thing is happening after another, thing after thing. Has anyone ever been there? If it's not one thing, it's another. You know, first, first they cut your hours, or you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, hey, there's a concern, we need you to come in. Or, hey, for some reason, this car just keeps leaking oil, and the AC will not get cold enough. 
Um, <laughs> maybe your children are having trouble at school. Or your friends keep saying, man, you don't hang out with us because you never go on any of the trips. You never hang out with us anymore. Or perhaps now, you know, the dog is sick and throwing up and peeing all over, using the bathroom all over the house, right? It feels like sometimes you can't catch a break. Life keeps lifing. You know, and sometimes each holiday, you miss your parents more and more. And uh, sometimes you just want to scream, you know. When you're in those situations, well, what do you do? Not to mention relationship stress and drama that happens with those. Lord, help me. Help me. Help <laughs> me. Right? <laughs> uh, sometimes you get to the point where you are losing your mind up in here, <laughs> up in here. Well, what is it? What do you do when you have these times? And I like David because when I read David, I can see how David experienced many of these things, many of these one after another, heartbreak after heartbreak, betrayal after betrayal. And what do we see David do? Psalm 31 reminds us that David says, but I will trust in you, O Lord. I say that you are my God. In Psalms 31, we see David again crying out. 3115, David again cries out. He says, my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and my persecutors. Sometimes, if you don't think a person is really going through anything, they say, hey, praise the Lord. And you're like, oh, you ain't been through nothing. <laughs> but when we see David's life, we are witnessing the trials and the struggles that David's going through. And David's continuing to say that my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face to shine on your servant. Save me in your everlasting love. David goes on to say in Psalm 62, verse 7, he said, On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Verse 8, trust in him. At all times, O oh people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Say lie. Sometime when I'm going through my life, or sometime when I'm going through my psalm, you know, I turn the psalms and I read how in times like these it's time to trust the Lord. Again, in Psalms 86, 2, David says, preserve my life. For I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. You know, sometimes I remember the old folks used to say God is a mind regulator. Sometimes you got to get your mind right. Sometimes you got to go into the text and remember that God will save your soul. That God, you are God. So now as we dig into the text, let's see how God shows up in today's story. First, we'll look at we have a hope, and we must have a hope that God is active. All right, verse 1. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, let me choose 12,000 men. So let me, oh, let me tell you where we're at. <laughs> so um, uh, chapter breaks weren't a part of the original text, so they were added later right? Like 1,500. Long, long, long. Uh, you know, so when you're reading scripture, don't just stop and be like, okay, this chapter must be different from this chapter or assume that there was a long time. So he just gave him the advice, hey, go do this with the wives. And then moreover, let me give you some more advice. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, let me choose 12,000 men and I will arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him, verse 2, I will come upon him, while he, uh, upon him while he is weary and discouraged and throw him into a panic. 
and all the people who are with him will flee. I will strike down only the king, verse 3, and I will bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You seek the life of only one man, and all the people will be in peace. Ahithophel is giving him some. He's like, listen, they are discouraged. They're tired. Remember, we saw, I know for us it's been three weeks, but it's in the chapters, right? David is crying. They're leaving. Oh, man. He's weeping over Jerusalem. And Ahithophel is like, let's go get them. Get 12,000 men. Let's go get them and take them now. They're weak. They're discouraged. Pounce, right? When they down, kick them. <laughs> it's Ahithophel, this ain't Jesus. Um, but, verse 4, look what they said. And the advice seems right in the eyes of Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Because they're like, Hithophel, that, hmm, that sounds like good advice to me. Right? So, um, sounds like very good advice. Okay, okay. And then, now Hithophel's plan was to grab 12,000 men, attack David while they were weary. And the elders, they said, oh, that's a good idea. What do you think? That's a good idea. Hey, they're in the strategy meeting. They're in the council. Sounds good. Well, now watch what God does. Verse 5. Then Absalom said, hold up a second. Uh, call Kushai, the archite, also, and let us hear what he has to say. Wait a minute. Hushai ain't even in the meeting. <laughs> Hushai's not even there. And Absalom say, everybody's like, man, Good job, I had to fail. And he said, you know what? Hold up, hold up. Let me get, why? It's good advice. Your generals say yes. The elders say yes. But remember, um, Hushai was David's friend who David sent back and said, hey, I want you to be a spy and I want you to counteract the, the uh, advice of Ahithophel. So we see we don't see God showed up to Absalom. We see Absalom say, you know what? Let's bring Ahithophel. We've got to have hope that God is always working. So even though he wasn't even in the meeting, they went and got him, brought him to the meeting. And then they said, uh, call Hushai the archite and let us hear what he has to say. It's verse 6. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom said to him, now this or thus has Ahithophel spoken? Shall we do as he says? If not, you speak. Golden opportunity. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment <laughs> all my life. Like, this is why I'm here. I'm, this is why I'm here. Yeah. Right? God has placed me in this position to do what I'm supposed to do. And sometimes God places you in a position because he expects you to do what he's called you to do. Even if you're not in the room, he'll put you in the room because now's the time for you to do what God's called you to do. Be the witness in the room when you get pulled in the room. Okay? Amen. So, um, thus Ahithophel said, uh, if not, then you speak. Well, then I believe, I love how God gives him wisdom on what to say during this time. Hushai said, verse 7, Hushai said to Absalom, this time the counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good. Uh-huh. I'm doing my job. <laughs> I understand the assignment. It is not good what he told you. Verse 8, Hushai said, Hushai said, you know that your father and his men are mighty men and that they are enraged like a bear robbed of their cubs in the field because your father is an expert in war. He will not spend the night with the people, verse 9. Behold, even now he has hidden himself in one of the pits or some other place. And as soon as some of the people fall at the first attack, whoever hears it, they're going to say, there's been a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. Then even the valiant men, whose hearts are like the heart of a lion, will utterly melt with fear. All Israel knows that your daddy, your father, is a mighty man. And those with him are valiant men. But my counsel, well, so, um, yeah, but my counsel is that all Israel be gathered to you. 
from Dan to Beersheba, as the sand by the sea for multitude, and that you go to battle in person. Woo! Now, I believe God gave Hushai wisdom on how to deal with it and how to present this case. Because he say, you know. If don't nobody else know, you know your dad a killer. You know these mighty men, they got resumes. They got rap sheets. They got prison records. I mean, <laughs> these guys here, they stand on business. Right? So, so... <laughs> <laughs> he said, for real. They said, you heard the song? David's killed his 10,000. Uh-huh, it's on the radio. So, so hold up, don't rush up in there. Because David and his men are like, you know, they done snatched up, they done had to move. They like bears that have lost their cub. They ready for a fight. So he's playing on the fear. Now, this is true, but... This is how he approaches the situation. The other thing, who should I realize who he's talking to? He's talking to Absalom. You know, long hair Absalom. You know, Absalom that has no blemish. Absalom that have the chariots running in front of him, right, when he walking in the city. So he say, how about we do this? Instead of Ahithophel, and this men of, you know, team, SEAL Team 6, 1,200, they go, how about we gather all the people, get a massive army, and then you lead the massive army. Mm, that'll look good, King. Come on, it, King. Right? So I see how, how God is using uh, wisdom. He's using wisdom to... Um, to um, Oppose the advice of Ahithophel. And you know what? <laughs> uh, Ahithophel was like, um, let me see, verse, uh, let's go on. More of the advice in verse 12. So we shall come upon him in some place where he's to be found, and we shall light upon him as the dew falls on the ground. It's going to be so much, there won't be anywhere to run. I mean, we're going to cover the ground. And of him and all the men with him, no one will be left. Verse 13. And if he withdraws into a city, then all Israel will bring ropes to that city and we'll drag it out into the valley until not even a pebble is to be found there. Verse 14. Hmm. And Absalom and all the men of Israel say, you know what? The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. Hmm. Huh. It worked. But look at why it worked. It says, for the Lord had ordained to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel so that the Lord might bring harm upon Absalom. Ooh-wee. So when I look at this, I see a couple things. First of all, did you see this? It says, God ordained that the good counsel uh, of Ahithophel would be defeated because Israel, the David, they were stressing. They were defeated. They were in a mental state not ready for war. But God ordained that the good counsel would be defeated so that the Lord might bring harm to Absalom. Look at this. The one who wanted to harm the Lord's anointed, the Lord had chosen to harm him. I want to look at two things. First of all, God answers prayer. It's been a couple weeks ago, but we can go back in the 2 Samuel verses 15. Uh, 2 Samuel verse 15, 31 says, And it was told David that Ahithophel was among the contributors. And what did David do? The Bible says, David said, O Lord, please turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. So we see that here, God is answering prayer. The, sometimes you may not remember what you prayed, but God never forgets. And so it may be the prayer of grandma. It may be the prayer of you in a moment, but God doesn't forget. So when you call out to God in prayer with the faith of a mustard seed, 
we have a God that hears and we have a God that answers. Amen. You better be careful how you mess with me because I might call my daddy. Come on. Huh, huh. Huh. Don't make me tell my daddy on you. Huh. Because he hears his son and his daughter when they call. And the Bible says that David prayed. And now the, because um, they agreed. They said, Ahithophel, that's good advice. And now Ahithophel's advice, they were like, who mm, shot? Your foolishness. It's crazy. That's a suicide mission. That's crazy. Let's go with uh, this uh, mission. But let me go a little deeper. Also understand what it said. It said, uh, let's go back to, um, let's go back to 14 real quick. Let's understand that it said, the Lord had ordained to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel. God ordains things. He decrees things, and they must line up to what God has said. If you go a little further back, into chapter 7, we see that God told David that I have anointed your king and said your family will rule Israel and your house will be established forever. So God is standing on what he said. So when our prayers line up with what he said, when we agree with what God has already ordained, it shall come to pass. You've got to understand that it doesn't matter what people have designed against you. You've got to know that what God has ordained is going to happen. God has ordained that his people will be protected. God didn't prevent Daniel from going into the lion's den. He just shut the lion's mouth because God has ordained that his people will be protected. You know that God has ordained that at the end you will win. God has decreed over his people that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you shall not condemn. This is the heritage of the saints of the Lord. Your Bible says. So sometime I'll talk to people and they say, it's going to be all right. You know what I tell them? I say, I know. Huh? Because your Bible says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called to his promise. Hey, yeah, it's going to be all right. I know. Because I understand what the Bible says. My mom used to say it like this. You got to know that you know that you know that you know. So when the situation starts acting crazy, when things are happening back to back to back, one after another, I know that I love God and all things are working together for my good. Amen. So you got to know that God is working. Verse 15. Um, let's go. Verse 15. Then Hushai said to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, thus, thus and so did... Ahithophel's council, um, Absalom, and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus, so have I counseled. So he tells them, hey, here's what Ahithophel said. Now, he's continuing to do his job. His job is to get, understand what's happening and let, send them out, send the spies back, right? So um, then Hushai said to Zadok and Abiathar, uh, thus and so did Ahithophel counsel Absalom. And this is what I said, verse 16. Now, therefore, send quickly to David. Go, send quickly and tell David, do not stay tonight at the fords of the wilderness, but by all means pass over, lest the king and all the people who already agreed what the Hithophel said, lest the king and all the people who are with him be swallowed up. Now, Jonathan and uh, Ahimez are waiting at in Roa. Point two, so point one was we have to know that God is working. Point two, we have to have hope that God has people working. Okay? So let's see the people working. Now Jonathan and Emma has were waiting at El, El Rogel. A female servant was to go and tell them, and they were to go tell King David. 
for they were not to be seen entering the city. Okay, so they've got like a, a serious plan. Hey, I'm going to tell you. Y'all go tell, uh, tell the little girl. And the girl's going to go tell. Um, so those two, um, they're the sons of Zadar, Zadak and Abiathar. Okay, so when you see Jonathan and Ahimez, these are their sons, right? So they got this little spy network going on. Okay, I like it. Um, but a young man saw them. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And told Absalom. So both of them went away quickly and came to the house of a man at Burham who had a well in his courtyard, and they went down into it. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and scattered grain on it, and nothing was known of it. When Absalom, verse 20, when Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, they said, where is Ahimaaz uh, and Jonathan? And the woman said to them, they gone over the brook of water. <laughs> Ask me all these questions. <laughs> Uh, and when they sought, and when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. So as I look at the story, I see, now there are some people that are actively involved, right? Hey, they're in the spy network. Hey, you tell the girl, the girl tells one, and he goes to David. But it says that there was a man. Some random man in Barham, right? And this random man in Barham happened to have an empty well. So this random man in Barham happened to have an empty well. And I like it because the Bible doesn't even give the name of the person. The one that helped him out, we don't even know the name. It's just a random man in a city that had a well. And I know that God is raising up some people, and you may not even know them now. There's a random person sitting on an organ donor list. There is a random person in a bank office that's going to approve it. There's a random woman sitting at the clerk of courts downtown. There is a random person on a hiring committee. There is a random guy on a parole board. There is a random guy, a random person that God is going to use to answer your prayer. We have to have hope. That God is not only working, but he's got people working. Because there's a random person in Bahram <laughs> that said, jump in here and we're going to hide you. Hallelujah. And it says, and after, verse 21, and after they had gone, the man came up out the well. Appreciate it, random person. Now let me keep doing <laughs> what I need to do. And he went and told King David. And they said to David, Arise and go quickly over the water, for thus and so has Ahithophel counseled against you. And verse 22, Then David arose, and all the people were with, who were with him, and they crossed the Jordan. By daybreak, no one was left who had not crossed the Jordan. Now I want to contrast David, and those of us that have hope, I want to contrast it with those who lose hope or may have lost hope. Verse 23 says, When Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey and went off home to his own city. He set his house in order and hanged himself. And he died and was buried in the tomb of his father. There is a difference between those who have hope and those who feel like there is no hope. And as a pastor, I see and hear stories. And I know that there are some people that you know or that you may have heard of that feel like there is no hope. Ahithophel had lost influence. 
He made some bad decisions. He seemed to have lost the respect of his peers, and he decides that there is no way out. So he decided to take his own life. We're living in a day and time where the enemy is attacking families. He's attacking our communities and placing the idea that you have no hope. And for many people, um, suicide or killing themselves is how they feel they can escape the situation. Um, we have to be aware of this and confront it. You know, as I was looking in Scripture, I saw that there were times when Jonah was fed up and wanted to kill himself. There is Elisha who was fed up and wanted to kill himself. There is Ahithophel, wise man. So it's not weak-minded people. It's not a certain type of people come from different classes. There is this desire or attack of the enemy to cause people to want to end themselves. And even the Apostle Paul. And sometimes when things get so bad, we don't want to talk about it. If you need to talk to somebody, talk to somebody. Sometimes we try to carry it all along. And sometimes the hurt that we carry causes us to make permanent choices and permanent decisions rather than talking about it. But Paul tells us that we should talk about our hurts and our setbacks. In 2 Corinthians 1.18, it says, For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Even the Apostle Paul got into a situation where he despaired of life himself. And he says to that church, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to hide from you that sometimes Christians go through stuff and have to deal with hard things. Then he says, uh, continue, indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but... That was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Verse 10, he delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. Talk to someone. Talking to somebody else gives you perspective. You can borrow hope from another. Paul is saying, hey, we learned in this situation that God will deliver us and can deliver us again. And he's letting the church know that God can deliver you. And God can deliver you again. Statistics say that sometimes people will attempt suicide multiple times. And God can deliver you again. Sometimes we'll deal with something and then we'll get right back in the situation. But we have a God that can deliver again and again. Talking to someone gives us perspective. Someone else has gone through bankruptcy. Someone else has gone through family issues. Someone else has gone through unfaithful spouses. Someone else has gone through divorces. Someone else has gone through drug abuse. Someone else has gone through sexual abuse. Talk to somebody. If you need help to talk because the pain is unbearable, one option is the suicide prevention hotline. All right? They have really helped and updated the number. So now the number is 988. All right, so if you're 
sometimes when we're crossing paths with people and um, either you yourself need to call, talk to someone, or you need to refer and let them know that 988 is the suicide and crisis prevention number because we want to make sure we're helping people in all areas and aspects of their life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So um, talk to somebody. We also need to cast down evil thoughts that come into your head. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Watch this. Casting down imaginations, ideologies, thoughts, ideas, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So when you have these thoughts, when you have these ideas, when you have these plans, we have to hold them up against the knowledge of God and bring those thoughts into captivity and through to the obedience of Christ. Because Jesus has said that he's come that you might have life. God promises us that if we believe in him, we shall not perish and we have everlasting life. Um, any thought that tells you to end your life is opposite of God who has given us life and everlasting life and an eternal life. So we have to bring those thoughts into captivity. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You shall live and not die. Amen? Because God is the God of hope. Um, Romans 12, 12, just a couple steps. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Patient is that sitting in it. You know, not everything gets fixed tomorrow, but be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer. Verse 13, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to, uh, and seek to show hospitality. Many times, if you not or stop focusing just on your issues, your situation, your problems, your pains, your heartache, but contribute to the needs of the saints, looking out for another brother or sister, showing hospitality, getting together with another brother or sister. Many times you get the different perspective. You get to realize that, you know what? There is something worth living for. There is more that is before me than that is behind me. God is changing some things. God is working some things out. Amen? Amen. 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 Verse and Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope, you serve a God of hope. So if you ever feel hopeless, understand that the God I serve is the God of hope. And um, Paul prays, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. You can have hope. And it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that he places in his believers we can have hope. And so as people are surrounding by us, going through different things, let us not be like Ahithophel who sees a situation and feels there's no way out. We turn to the God of hope. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, verse 24. We'll, we'll finish the chapter. Verse 24. Then David came to Mahiniam. And Absalom crossed the Jordan with all the men of Israel, right? So David went up to Mahinium, like we showed on the map. And Absalom also crossed over the Jordan. 25. Now Absalom had set Amasa over the army instead of Joab. Amasa was the son of a man named 
Iltra, and Ishmaelite, who had married Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zariah, Joab's mother. 26. And Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. Uh-oh. They're getting ready. The army is there. David is there. Then David came to Mahananam, which is a fortified city, by the way. <clears throat> when David came to Mahananam, Shobi, the son of Nahash from Rebbe of the Ammonites, and Mikar, the son of Amiel from Lodabar, which is where Mephibosheth was, and Barzillai, the Gideonite from Regolim, <laughs> what did they do? Uh, they brought bread, basins, earthen vessels, wheat, barley, food, parched grains, beans and lentils, come on somebody, honey, curds and sheep and cheese from the herd for David and the people with him to eat. For they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. We have a God and we have to have hope that God will refresh you. When they were weary and hungry and um, in the wilderness, God sent him some people to refresh him, to bring him some food, to help him out. And um, when Elisha was going through his storm, God gave Elisha three things when he was depressed and distressed and wanted to harm and was, had lost hope. God gave him a word. God made him a sandwich, made him some food, and he told him to get some rest. Sometimes when we get stressed, get a word. Yes, sir. Get some nutrition, get something to eat. And sometimes we got to get some rest because we're running real hard now. All right? But we have a God of hope, and this God of hope will refresh you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Doing our altar call at the end of service, if you need prayer, if you've been having thoughts and you need someone to give you a word or to pray with you, we will have ministers here at the altar. We also have a hotline that you can get in touch with, but I wanted to use this time to see, to show us that um, David was in a tough situation and God is turning the situation around. So regardless of how you came in here today, we have a God that can turn the situation around. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> well, we are a church that uh, receives the word and we give. So this is the time of the service where we give to the house of the Lord. There are multiple ways to give, but before I do that, let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for your people. Lord, I don't know how they came in today, but I pray that they have been encouraged to know that you are a God of hope. Lord, if anyone needs to know you as their Lord and Savior, I ask that today they would call upon your name. For the Bible says those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this house. I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of each individual here and in the lives connected to the people that you have here. We trust and believe, God, that you are working in our situations. We trust and believe that you are drawing people in that will act and serve and move on our behalf. And Lord, we thank you for being a God of hope. Strengthen us each and every day. We know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And we thank you for blessing your people. And we thank you for a solid word that we can stand on. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. There we go. Amen. <clears throat> Um, so now, um, there are multiple ways to give, um, <laughs> I'm working on my transition, pray for it, brother. Uh, there are multiple ways to give, um, you can 
text the amount and so forth. Uh, 84321, Cash App, Zelle, they're all options that are available. I'm excited for what is happening. I was walking the building today uh, with the contractor and it's amazing what God is doing. Amen. Um, as we create space for God to do even greater things in our midst. Um, we got a couple announcements today. Very quickly, our announcements are um, tomorrow, I believe, first Thursday, the seniors are having Tech Savvy. So where uh, they're going through this process, helping you become more technologically savvy. I appreciate the forward thinking of our seniors. I love this group. They're an amazing group. Uh, it'll be tomorrow at... Um, one o'clock, one o'clock, amen. Next. Um, Life or um, First Friday. So not only are we creating community for the seniors, the young adults also have community this Friday. Woo, young adults. Um, so make sure if you're a young person between the ages of, you know, young to 31, young adult age, then come out to the service. I'm not invited because I'm not, <laughs> so I don't know the age group. Um, but they have a good time. I did sneak in one day and I saw that this is a good, good place for your young adults, to, young uh, ones to get connected. Life classes. Um, um, the life classes have started. Uh, New Testament survey, grief share was last night. Uh, we have the New Believers class starting this Thursday. Next week, we have Single and Parenting and Art of Parenting st starting. One of the things we're doing is creating community. We're helping you find your Berzeli and your, I couldn't think of, remember all the names of those other people that came to refresh one another, right? Uh, Boys to Men. Boys to Men is... Um, not only do we have men stepping up where we're pouring into men, we're also training up the boys to be men. So um, they are meeting, I believe it's starting September 14th. So if you have a young adult, a young adult, if you have a boy age 10 to, no, 14, 14 18, yep, 14, 18, then, right, I know, I'm trying to, is it? Is it? <laughs> I mean, this LASIK is getting real. It, hey, it's been about 20 years. So, um, so uh, it's on the screen behind you. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, Bison Insights. What is Bison Insights? September 15th, there is a um, crew. Uh, we want people to create community within crew. Um, and this will be a time to learn how to do it. We see some people trying to create a hangout, uh, but we're trying to figure out, hey, how do I do it? I, I, did I do it right? This will be the place to come and understand how to do that. And then lastly, September 21st, I want to mention um, the uh, Mind Matters for the seniors. We will have the Alzheimer's bus here. So if you're, this isn't just for the seniors. This is invite your friends, let the people in the community know so that we can have an understanding about uh, Alzheimer's. And um, that's going to be September 21st from 1 to 3. You can come get some information because um, we want to equip people with information and knowledge as well on various issues. All right. I believe, huh, pantry. Um, uh, this is a busy church, <laughs> um, but there is food available after service for those that need to take advantage of the pantry services. And now we will bless the food. <laughs> uh, we can stand and we'll bless the food and be dismissed. <clears throat> Dear Lord, Father, we thank you. We thank you for um, the hands that prepared the food. Lord, we thank you for feeding us manna from on high in your word. And now we are excited to partake for, of the manna and the, our regular food. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> uh, we are of God, little children. First John 4, 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God bless you, and they will be ministered at the altar.